Welcome back. All right, 13 games tonight in the National Hockey League. A lot of scoring, but the games were spread out, so I didn't really get all that overwhelmed tonight. So we're going to start things off talking about the Ottawa Senators and the Boston Bruins. It was Corpus Allo versus Olmark. Again, olmark has been the better goalie since the trade deadline. I am so glad they didn't trade him. Uh, early jump for the Sens. Frederick the Cantbury went in close. Giroux has a turnover chance. That saved the shots are 4-1 to one Ottawa, five and a half minutes in. Uh, then there's an issue with the glass that causes a delay. Uh, the Bruins get stuck at one shot for a while. On their second shot, they score. At 8.27 is Pasternak with a tip in front. Grizzlick and Zaka with the assists. Uh, the Bruins press at the half. And then at 11.23 on a turnover breakaway, Pasternak scores again. So that's the second goal of the first period. And before the period's out, he had a one-timer that was held by Corpus Allo. So it's 2-0 Boston after one. Second period, we get a power play for the Sens. There's a crossbar for Sanderson. We end up with 37 seconds of five on three. Boston doing Yeoman's work, or more importantly, Olmark doing Yeoman's work, because during the power plays there, uh, they do get killed six shots. Or no, it was eight shots during those power plays for Ottawa. Either way, they're up in the shots nine to two, five and a half minutes in. Bruins press at eight and a half minutes. And again, Olmark really was the story to this point. There was no reason for Boston to be ahead other than Linus Olmark. Bruins press at the half. We then get a power play for the Sens and they score on it. At 13.08, it's Pinto from Giroux uh, to make the game two to one. We get two minutes of four on four. Uh, with 2.44 left, the Bruins get a power play and Brazo ends up scoring during that power play. Another of the youngsters coming into the lineup for Boston. Uh, Shattenkirk and Geeky with the assists at 18.51. And I know Brazo is older than what we might qualify as a youngster, but yeah, rookies. Rookies coming into the lineup for Boston. Uh, so he buries a rebound there to make it 3-1. to one. But then at 19.57, Kachuk goes 5-hole on his own rebound. Uh, Chickren and Batherson with the assists. So that makes it 3-2 to two for Boston after 2. Third period, uh, Pasta to Zaka. There's a near miss there. The shots are only one apiece three minutes in. But at 4.43, on a backhand from the slot... And it's his second backhand goal. Uh, it is Pasternak with the hat trick from Shattenkirk and Heinen. Uh, he now sits, I think, seventh on the all-time goal list for the Boston Bruins. Uh, it's crazy. And he's second all-time on hat tricks now. Uh, so then at 5.08, Boquist adds one from Beecher and Shattenkirk. So there's Johnny Beecher with a point. Uh, Bruins press for another. They get a power play. And Brazo gets his second power play goal of the game. DeBrusk and Geeky with the assists at 1806. I, I think those are the first two career power play goals for Brazo. Uh, Kachuk is then thrown out of the game. Uh, he takes a penalty and he's like challenging the bench. I still think that Brady Kachuk, when he gets into these antics, I, I don't think it does anything to help the team. Like there's players that get the team fired up. I think Kachuk, it, it just doesn't. And it's, it's when they're losing like this. So 25 seconds left. The Sens get a power play. That runs out the clock. Boston wins this one 6-2. They go to 40, 41, 14, and 15. They've won three in a row. Ottawa 28, 35, and 4 with the loss. The shots on net 6-5. Boston after the first. 23-11 to 11, Ottawa in the second. And then 9-4 to 4, Boston in the third. It's like Ottawa used all their shots in the second period. <clears throat> final, final shots are 32-26 to 26 for Ottawa. Power plays the Sens 1 for 4. Boston 2 for 2. Hits, 34 apiece. Corpus Allo saved 20 out of 26. Olmark, another great game. 30 saves on 32 shots. He's a pretty good goalie. Maybe they should keep him. All right, Columbus and Detroit. So this was Tarasov versus Reimer. It did not start well for Detroit. I was like, man, they need this game, and they're not playing like they do. Uh, so Goudreau tries to bank one in. The shots are 5 nothing Columbus, three minutes into the game. So Reimer, very busy. Uh, we get a power play for Detroit. That's killed off. And then Wierenski scores at 5.56 for Columbus to get it oh, to get it to a one nothing lead. Jackets look for another. There's a press by Columbus at 9 minutes. With 9 minutes left, Detroit is still at one shot in the period. We get a power play for the Wings. That's killed off. And 8 seconds after it's done, Texier scores from Wierenski at 13.43. Mentioned him in the preview this morning. Texier's been playing well. The Wings would press with five minutes left. They do get some shots, but they do not get a goal. It's 2-0 Columbus after one. Second period. Power play for Detroit, and they score on it. It's Raymond from Fabry and Kane at 257. And then at 423, they tie it. Moritz Sider with the goal from Sherratt and Rasmussen. The shots are 8-2 for Detroit, eight and a half minutes in. Fabry to Fisher near miss. There's a power play for Columbus. That's killed off. Columbus presses after it's done. 
Uh, the Wings would press with a minute and a half left, but it's 2-2 after two. Third period, the Wings press. They're kept to the outside. Uh, Texie has a rush chance that's held, and the shots are 3-0 Columbus three minutes in. So it looks like Columbus ready to steal one in Detroit. Wings press at three and a half minutes, but we get a power play for Columbus, and they score on it. Marchenko wires one from the slot. Wierenski and Goudreau with the assists at 4-26. Uh, shots are 6-0 Columbus six minutes in. Again, it looked like, well, I, I guess Detroit just... They're, they're going to back this way out, uh, back their way out of the playoff spot. The fans call one. The referee doesn't, so he sucks. Uh, Fabry's denied. Puck's held there. The shots are 6-5 to five Columbus with 9.5 minutes left, meaning Detroit had had five shots in a row. Wings press with six minutes left. Debrink gets denied and close. The goalie pull happens with 1.45 left. Columbus guilty of an icing with 19 seconds left. We always hear how teams don't care about icing. It's no big deal. It is, though, because at 19.47... So with the faceoff in Columbus' zone, Raymond buries a rebound from Kane and Gostisbehere. They tie the game. So if you get center line and you don't get the icing, you probably win it in regulation if you're Columbus. So you go to overtime. Uh, the Wings controlled early. And Kane, on what was their second shot of the overtime, he buries it. Debrinket and Sider with the assists of 48 seconds. Detroit pulls this one out. They win 4-3 to three in overtime. They go to 35-28-6 and six with the win with the overtime loss. Uh, Columbus 23, 34, and 11. Or is it 12? Yeah, it's 12. 23, 34, and 12. Sorry, you guys know I know I know it's 12. Shots on net are 20 to 5 for Columbus in the first, 10 7 Detroit in the second, 10 to 8 Detroit in the third. They have both shots in the overtime, including the shot that matters. Final shots 35 to 27 for Columbus. Power plays the Blue Jackets 1 for 2, Detroit 1 for 3. Both teams had 15 hits in this game. Tarasov saved 23 out of 27. Reimer was pretty good. 32 saves on 35 shots. And so, yeah, both of these teams above the playoff line in the East got tested by teams at the bottom of the East, but they come out with points tonight. All right, next up, Pittsburgh and New Jersey. So for Pittsburgh, of course, their, their playoff hopes are just hanging by a thread. Tonight may have sunk them. So it's Jari versus Allen. There's a post for Heesher. There's a press by the Devils at, at a minute and a half. The shots are 5-2 to two for the Devils at four and a half minutes. Uh, Mercer opens the scoring for New Jersey from Nosek and Palat at 5.35. Palat has a net feed then. That's held. There's a press by the Penguins with eight and a half minutes left. More pressure by the Penguins with four, and, four minutes left. Mercer then has a rush chance. That's blocked. Uh, Allen with some heroics with a minute and a half left. There were some New Jersey defenseman sticks in there as well to keep pucks out. Uh, Bratz then denied on a rush because he doesn't get goals often. So it's 1-0 New Jersey after the first. Second period, Devils press at a minute and a half. Raquel is denied and close. The shots are 5-1 to one Penguins at four and a half minutes. Things get pushy on a hold by Jake Allen. Devils press at five and a half minutes, but Marcus Patterson scores for Pittsburgh from Bunting and Raquel at 7-16, and then the Penguins look for the lead. So they have some momentum. We get a power play for the Penguins. That's killed off. Then the Devils get a power play, and they score on it. Timo Meyer from Luke Hughes and Brad at 14-20. It's a tip in by Meyer or Mercer in front of the net. Things then get pushed on a hold by Jari. The Devils press with two minutes left, and they come out of the second period with a 2-1 to -one lead. So third period, there's an early power play for the Devils. That gets killed off. Shots are 3-1 to one New Jersey, four and a half minutes in. Bratt fires one wide on a rush. Again, lots of rush chances for Jesper Bratt that I, I get on the board. He just doesn't score on them. Uh, Holtz then buries one in close. Jack Hughes and Luke Hughes with the assists at 8.58. And then at 9.14, Mercer gets the second goal of the game. Nosek and Palat with the assists yet again. We get a power play for the Penguins. That's killed off. The Devils get a power play after it's done, and they score on theirs. So again, that power play for Pittsburgh doesn't score, and their penalty kill lets them down. It's Meyer from Bratt and Jack Hughes at 16.53. Uh, Pittsburgh would answer. Rust scores from Crosby at 17.14, but that's as close as they get. So your final score is 5-2 for New Jersey. They keep their faint playoff hopes alive. They're 34-32-4. Uh, for Pittsburgh, 30, 29, and 9 with the loss. Shots on net, 15, 12, New Jersey in the first, 18 to 9, Pittsburgh in the second, 14 to 8, New Jersey in the third. Final shots are 38 apiece. Power plays, 0 for 2 for Pittsburgh, 2 for 3 for New Jersey. That's the difference maker right there. Uh, hits 11 to 10 for Pittsburgh. Jari saves 33 out of 38. Allen, 36 saves on 38 shots. It, it's frustrating because Jake Allen's playing really well for New Jersey. And I think back to all those games they lost because. They couldn't get a good game out of a goaltender, and, well, here we are. All right, next up, 
Uh, Winnipeg and New York. The New York Rangers. And this might have been one of the best games I've seen Winnipeg play this year. Uh, even though the shots were heavily in favor of New York at times, I still felt like Winnipeg played well. So it's Hellebuck versus Shesterkin. Uh Cooley has a net drive that's poke-checked by Hellebuck. Nicely played. Shots are 4 nothing New York at 2.5 minutes. So Hellebuck's keeping him above water at that stage. Rangers press halfway through the period. We get a power play for Winnipeg. Connor has a one-timer that's held. We get a minute and nine seconds of four on four. The teams trade rush chances. Both power plays are killed off. Uh, Cooley's then denied on a breakaway. The Rangers press with two and a half minutes left. But yeah, it's scoreless after one. Second period. At 4.04, Shifley buries one in close. Uh, Ayafalo and Schmidt with the assists. Uh, Jets look for another. We get a power play for the Rangers, though, and they score on it. It's Wenberg with his first as a Ranger. Lafreniere and Roslovic with the assists at nine minutes and 30 seconds. We then get a power play for the Jets. They score on theirs as well. Kyle Connor with his 30th of the season. Monaghan and Toffoli with the assists at 12-18. And that one's buried from a sharp angle. Uh, Ehlers to Iafalo. There's a near miss there. And then on a turnover breakaway, Mark Shifley with a great goal at 17-55. It's 3-1 Winnipeg in New York after two. Third period. Shots are one apiece at three minutes. Kako has a chance that's held. We got a power play for the Jets. That's killed off. Rangers press at the half. The shots are 7-6 for New York with six and a half minutes left. The New York presses with six minutes left. They pull the goalie with three minutes left. They would score as well. Uh, Lafreniere from Fox and Trocek at 18.06. So Laf with a goal and an assist in this one. And uh, yeah, makes it a 3-2 to two game. But they pull the goalie again, and Winnipeg hits the empty net. It's Shifley uh, with the hat trick goal from Morrissey and Monaghan at 19.51. Makes your final score 4-2. to two. The Winnipeg Jets go to 44-19-5 and five with the win. The Rangers 45-20-4 with the loss, and that puts Florida back in first on the power rankings. Shots on net, 13-9 for the Rangers in the first, 11 apiece in the second, 16-7 Rangers in the third. Final shots are 40-27 for the Rangers. Power plays Winnipeg 1 for 3, Rangers 1 for 2. The hits 22-16 Rangers. Hellebuck, 38 saves on 40 shots. That's some pretty good goaltending. Shesterkin saves 23 out of 26 at the other end. All right, moving along. Uh, Toronto and Philly, beating the same team twice in a row is not easy, especially in their barn. But Toronto almost came back and made it work. So it's Samsonov versus Erson and 19 seconds in, tip it. He gets the goal from Frost and York, and the Flyers 26-7-4 when they score first. So when they get that first goal, they're pretty hard to beat. And remember, this is a Flyers team without Couturier. There's been a lot of talk about the... The, the issues this team's been facing recently. But again, uh, if they win games and they end up making the making the playoffs, <clears throat> sorry, uh, Tortorella's going to be up for coach of the year because this was the team that was supposed to be right near the bottom of the league. So the Flyers press at three and a half minutes. Sanheim to tip it. There's a near miss there. Reeves had a fight with Delorier that took a while to get started. Like they just kind of stood there and looked at each other and I thought, couldn't linesmen just jump in the middle? I mean, the fans would have gone nuts and so would people online, but... I thought it would have been funny if they had. Anyways, uh, McMahon has a tip shot that saved. The Leafs press at six and a half minutes. They're kept to the outside. Frost has a rebound chance. That's held. Uh, shots are five to two Philly at nine minutes. The Leafs press with five and a half minutes left. There's more pressure by the Leafs in the final minute, but it's one nothing Philly after the first. Second period, uh, 56 seconds in. Good forechecking by the Flyers leads to a 2 nothing goal. Sanheim gets that one from Hathaway. So Sanheim continues to put up career highs, goals, points, assists. He's having a great year. Uh, Domi nearly answers on the next shift. We get a power play for Toronto. That's killed off. Farabee has a near miss on a breakaway. The shots are 10 to 5 for Philly with nine and a half minutes left. Leafs press with nine minutes left. There's a power play for the Flyers. Does it suck? Well, yeah, it's a Flyers power play. Uh, there's a post for Nylander on a net drive and then Frost scores from Paling and Adderd at 16-26. It's 3-0 for the Flyers. Uh, Matthews has a tip shot that saved. The Leafs press to close out the period. But yeah, 3-0 for the, for the Flyers. But it is the Flyers, so you just never know. Uh, third period, early press by the Flyers. We then get a power play for Toronto. And 10 seconds into it, it's a power play goal. Uh, 1 minute and 11 seconds into the period, Nylander from Matthews and Tavares makes the score 3-1. Uh, Flyers nearly respond. The shots are 3-1 to one for Philly at four minutes. They end up getting a power play. Does it suck? Well, yeah, it's a Flyers power play. And then Bertuzzi scores from Riley and Tavares at 10-16. Makes it a 3-2 to two game. Uh, we get a power play for Toronto. That's killed off. And then, not long after it ends, at 13 minutes exactly, Lawton scores from Tippett. So they get that two-goal lead back. 
but Toronto pulls the goalie and they score six on five. Tavares from Bertuzzi and Matthews at 1750. They pulled the goalie again. They had opportunities. They did not tie it. Philadelphia wins a much needed game. Four to three. They go to 35, 26, and eight with the win. With the loss, uh, Toronto 38, 20, and nine on the season. The shots on net, eight to seven Philly in the first, 15, 11 Philly in the second, 12 to seven Toronto in the third. Final shots, both teams had 30. Uh, power plays, one for three for Toronto. Philly, 0 oh for two, because their power play isn't any good. Uh, hits, 33 to 28 Philly. Samsonov, 26 saves on 30 shots. Erson, 27 saves on 30 shots. So now, I need to change boards. All right, board number two of three. Uh, Carolina in against the New York Islanders, and uh, Carolina really didn't leave this in much doubt, did they? It's Kachetkov versus Sorokin. The Islanders press at a minute and a half. Ajo's denied, and that is the Sebastian Ajo. Okay, fine, the Sebastian Ajo with the Canes is denied. Rebounds cleared. Pajot has a net drive that's blocked. It's that game between Sebastian Ajo's. Uh, Nelson's denied as the Islanders press. The shots are 5-3 to three for the Canes at six minutes. Eventually, uh, the Canes score first. Jarvis from Shea and Getzel. At 12.48, the Islanders press for a response, but a give-and-go on a rush. Carolina makes it 2-0. Jarvis with the second goal of the period. Gensel and Slavin with the assists at 15.01. So Jake Gensel had himself a bit of a game. Uh, good forechecking by the Canes. Shea's denied. The rebound's held. 148 left. The Canes get a power play. Natchez has a one-timer that's saved, and then there's a buzzer beater. He scores. Natchez on the power play at 19.58. Kuznetsov and Shea with the assists. So Brady Shea with a couple of helpers, and there's Kuznetsov on the board again. It's 3-0 Carolina after the first. Second period, Dobson has a rush that's defended. The Canes press at two and a half minutes. There's a net feed to Gensel, near miss there. It's all Canes. The Islanders are pinned down. Sorokin holds. The shots are 10 to 1 Carolina at seven minutes. Fans weren't happy. The Islanders press with nine minutes left. The Canes, though, they're not allowing anything in the middle of the ice. Everything's kept to the outside. Uh, pressed by Carolina with six minutes left. Svechnikov is a fast break. That's defended. The Islanders had a two-on-one that misfires. This is where the fans are getting really vocal about how they're not happy. There's a net feed to Lee. There's a near miss there. It's still 3-0 Carolina after two. Third period, the Islanders press at a minute and a half. Shots are 4-1 to in their favor four minutes in. And at four and a half minutes, Palmieri scores from Nelson and Horvat to make it 3-1. The Islanders then press at seven minutes. But the shots are 9-6 to six for the Canes with six and a half minutes left. So they're slowly taking it over again. The goalie gets pulled with four and a half minutes left because they're down by two. And at 16-22, Gensel scores uh, from Ajo. So that makes it 4-1. to one. Barzell's then denies. The Islanders are pressing, trying to get something back. And then Martin had a fight with Lemieux because why not? And your final score is 4-1. to one. Uh, 43, 20, and 6 is the record now for Carolina. For the Islanders, things have gotten tough again. They're 29, 24, and 15, and they find themselves back below the playoff line. So shots on net, 14 to 8 Carolina in the first, 11 apiece in the second, 12 to 9 Islanders in the third. Final shots, 34 to 31 Carolina. Power plays, the Canes 1 for 1, the Islanders 0 for 1. That's an Islanders game. There's not much in the way of power plays. Hits 20 to 16 Islanders. Kachetkov saves 30 out of 31. Sorokin saves 30 out of 33. So there's Kachetkov giving the Canes very good goaltending once again. He's really saved their bacon in the net, hasn't he? All right, next up, uh, San Jose and Nashville. You know, San Jose was having a good game, and then they just didn't. So it's Krona versus Saros. The Sharks had the only shot on net four minutes in. There's good forechecking by San Jose. Nashville presses at six minutes. We get a power play for the Preds. That's killed off. Uh, there's a near miss for Evangelista. He hits the post. And then at 11-18, Yossi, who's still on a heater. He scores from McDonough and Forsberg. It was a screenshot from the point. Shots are 10-5 to for Nashville with five minutes left. Things get punchy on a hold by Krona. There's a press by Nashville with four and a half minutes left. Then the Sharks press with three and a half minutes left. Eventually they score. Uh, Granlin wires one from the right circle. Costin and Ferraro with the assists at 17-18. It's 1-1 one, one after 1. Second period, there's an early press by the Sharks. The Sharks leading in shots four and a half, or five and a half minutes in by 4-3 to three total. And Ferraro on a bar down goal at 5-46. It's 2-1 San Jose. Nashville's 14-game point streak looked like it was in jeopardy. And the word trap game came, or the term trap game came up a lot at that point. Uh, there's a power play for San Jose. That's killed off. That's a really key kill right there if San Jose scores again, but they don't. Uh, Sissons fires one wide on a rush, and then Zucker uh, buries a puck that was behind Corona. I think Corona thought he had it, didn't, gets through. Uh, the assists on that one, Sissons and McDonough at 9.37, and then at 15.26, McCarron, who's suddenly getting goals this season. Sherwood and Yossi with the assists, 
At 17.50 on a backhand from the slot, Evangelista gets the third goal for Nashville in a row. Uh, Yossi and Forsberg with the assists. And then Nashville scored again, but it's after the horn, so the fans are upset. It doesn't count. I think Nashville made it up to them in the third. Uh, it is 4-2 to Nashville after two. Third period. Uh, Pred score, but it's goalie interference, so that goal doesn't count either. Again, fans not happy. Uh, there's a power play for Nashville. Forsberg has a tip shot. That's held, uh, and that, that power play is killed off. There's a press by Nashville with nine and a half minutes left, and at 10.35, McCarron scores from Sherwood. It's the second goal of the game. Uh, then at 14-13, Jankowski on a one-timer. Uh, well, the one-timer gets tipped in. Barry and Beauvillier with the assist. So those, there's Beauvillier with his first point as a pred. Uh, at 14-43, so 30 seconds later, Forsberg scores from Nyquist to McDonough. The app told me they were both at 14-13. And I thought, that's not possible. Uh, then at 16-16, Novak scores from Sherwood and Jankowski just to make sure that that No Mercy magnet gets on the board, and also to make sure that an 80s magnet gets on the board. So it's an 80s game, it's a blowout. Uh, eight to two is your final. Nashville, 15 game point streak. They're 40, 25 and four with the win. Uh, San Jose, 16, 45 and seven with the loss. I still don't think anybody wants to play Nashville in the first round. Shots on net, 17 to eight Nashville in the first, nine apiece in the second, 14 to three Nashville in the third. Final shots are 40 to 20 for the Preds. Power plays 0 for 1 for San Jose, 0 for 2 for Nashville. The hits 26 to 16 for San Jose. Corona saved 32 out of 40. Poor guy. Uh, Sorrow saved 18 out of 20. Not overly busy. Still puts up a 900 save percentage. And for Nashville, they've now tied the team records team record for the longest uh, point streak. All right. Next up, uh, Colorado and C and St. Louis. And Colorado might have made sure St. Louis doesn't make the playoffs with this result. So, it's Annanen versus uh, Bennington in this one. Blues press at a minute and a half. The shots are one apiece at two, two and a half minutes. At 6.36, Rantanen wires one from the slot. McKinnon and McCarr with the assists. I still think it's unfair that Colorado puts all of its players together like that. Um, every time I see all these guys out there, I'm like, this is like an all-star team. It's just not fair to the other guys. Uh, Middlestad has a rush chance that saved. The Blues press at eight minutes, and eventually they score. It's Nathan Walker with a sixth of the season. Perunovic and Falk with the assists at 8.48. The shots are 8-6 to six for Colorado with seven and a half minutes left. Thomas is denied on a rush. Walker gets robbed. Uh, puck is held there. There's some pushing. Uh, 5.2 seconds left. The Blues get a power play, so that rolls over into the second period. Uh, that is where the Blues finish the kill. Kyra's uh, got a rush chance. That's blocked. The shots are 5 0 for the Blues at three and a half minutes. And at 444, Torupchenko buries a rebound to give the Blues the lead. Falk and Walker with the assists uh, on that one. Blues press for another, but at 641, off of a faceoff win, Middlestad gets one from Girard. So Casey Middlestad continues to produce pretty well since coming over from Buffalo. At 843, Braden Shen answers. Uh, he scores from Jake Neighbors, so that makes it 3-2 to two for the Blues. The Avs press to respond. We get a power play for Colorado. Uh, then we get five seconds of four on four. Uh, the Blues power play gets killed off. The Avs get a power play shortly thereafter. They score on this one. It's Rantanen from Drew and Nachushkin at 18:46. so that's two goals in the game for Rantanen thus far. Uh, and we go to the third period with them tied with the Blues 3-3. Uh, Manson has a shot that deflects out early in the third. Good forechecking by the Avs. They get, the Blues then get some pressure three minutes in. At 4.15, Ranton and scores from Nachushkin for his seventh career hat trick. Uh, makes it 4-3 to three for the Avs. Blues press to respond. The shots are 6-3 to three St. Louis at seven and a half minutes. We get a power play for the Avs. That becomes 4-on-4. Four four. Everything's killed off there. The Avs press with four minutes left, and they hold on to this. They win at 4-3 to three in St. Louis. They go to 44-20-5 with the win. With the loss, St. Louis 36-30-3. And, and, of course, for Colorado, they keep pace with the Jets and stay tied atop the Central Division. Now Dallas has to keep pace with them. Shots on net, 16-10 Colorado in the first, 14-13 Colorado in the second, 10-5 for St. Louis in the third final shots, 35 to 33 for Colorado. Power plays, the Avs one for three, St. Louis 0 for three, the hits uh, 29 to 16 for St. Louis. Uh, Annanen continues to put up good numbers, 30 saves on 33 shots, uh, and Bennington 31 saves on 35 shots at the other end. So uh, entertaining game, but if you're a Blues fan, very discouraging result. Next up, last one on this board's Montreal and Edmonton. And we're going to talk about the four minute power play. I get the feeling that Habs fans are going to want to talk about that. So, 
Uh, Montembeau versus Pickard in this one. We get a power play for the Oilers. That's killed off. Shots are 2-1 to one for the Habs at 4.5 minutes. At 9 minutes and 20 seconds, McDavid scores from Ekholm. So that makes it one nothing for the Oilers. Uh, the Oilers press with 5.5 minutes left. The Habs draw a power play. That's killed off. It's one nothing Oilers after one. Second period, the Oilers press at a minute and a half. McDavid has a one-timer. That's held. The shots are 2-1 to one Edmonton at 3.5 minutes. Uh, Matheson has a one-timer that's saved. There's a great blast by Mike Matheson there. Uh, the Habs press are kept to the outside. Montreal gets a power play. That's killed off. Uh, the Oilers press with six and a half minutes left at 14.56. Adam Henrique gets a goal. Uh, that's from Ekholm and Bouchard. Makes it 2-0. Uh, the Oilers press for another with 3.23 left. The Oilers get a power play. Hyman can't bury one in close. That's killed off, but they're up 2-0 after two. Third period, early press by the Oilers, but then it's turned over and on a rush. Suzuki scores from Slavkovsky and Savard at 32 seconds. So it looked like, ah, the Oilers are going to set this up. Nope. Uh, Oilers look to respond. Ghoulies then denied as the Habs get some pressure. Uh, Caulfield has a wrister. That saved. There's an ozone penalty by the Habs, but they end up making it 49 seconds of 4-on-4, four four, and during the 4-on-4, four four, they score. Uh, it's Ghoulie from Evans and Harris at 4:43, so that makes it a 2-2 draw. Uh, near miss for Caulfield. That power play ends up being killed off because, of course, it becomes a Habs power play. Uh, the Habs press at 9 minutes. McDavid has a backhand. That's held. Shots are 7-5 to five for the Habs with 5 minutes left. And then with 2.53 left, uh, there's a Oilers power play. Dreisaitl has a chance. It's held. That's killed off. But uh, with 27 and a half seconds left, the Oilers get a 4-minute power play. I was surprised that held up under review. I felt that Kane brought the Montreal Canadian player stick up. And it caught, I think it was Henrique in the face. I understand he was cut. I understand you're responsible for your own stick. I thought it was Kane that was responsible for the stick coming up. Just me personally, I was surprised they held up the four-minute power play. So that rolls over into the overtime. And while they got out of the first two minutes of it, well, four minutes, especially a four-on-three, it's just too much. Uh, so Hyman gets denied. They cycle. And at 317, Dreisaitl gets the power play marker. Uh, McDavid and Nurse with the assists. So... Uh, the Oilers come out with a 3-2 overtime victory. They go to 41-21-4. and four. Montreal 25-31-12 with the overtime loss. Shots on net, 8-7 Montreal in the first, 10-9 Montreal in the second, 9-7 Edmonton in the third. They had six shots in the overtime. It was five shots that were saved by Montembeau, and that sixth one goes in. Final shots, 31-25 Edmonton. Power plays, uh, Montreal 0-3, for three, Edmonton 1-5. for five. The hits were 27 apiece. Montembeau saves 28 out of 31. Pickard saved 23 out of 35. Now I need to change boards. All right, last board. Uh, Minnesota and Anaheim. So, man, uh, Gustafson versus Gibson. Now, here's the funny thing. This was on Sportsnet Plus because it's an ESPN Plus broadcast. It was not available to me on my NHL Center Ice package. Nope. Uh, Sportsnet Plus broadcasts, I've noticed that my NHL Center Ice broadcast it doesn't work. Uh, and then we ended up with the feed not working on Sportsnet Plus either. ESPN Plus, it's the only feed I have trouble with. And when I say I, I just mean in Canada. It's not like just my house doesn't get those games that Gary's just pushing a button. Anyways, there's early jump for the Wild. He totally would. Uh, shots are 2-1 to one Minnesota at three and a half minutes. Kaprizov's denied on a rush. The Ducks get stuck on one shot for a while. Uh, we then get a power play for the Wild. That's killed off. The Ducks get a power play. That's killed off as well. The Wild press with four and a half minutes left. But it wasn't It wasn't a, a, a great period of hockey. It wasn't the most exciting period of hockey. Uh, but yeah, it's scoreless after one. Second period, 35 seconds in. Hartman buries a rebound from Felino and Boldy. And the Ducks are or the Ducks are in trouble. The Wild are off and running. At 156, Merrill uh, goes post and in after a face-off win by Kuzna Dinov. Uh, he gets the secondary assist, Goudreau with the primary assist, and with that, Kuzna Dinov has his first point in the National Hockey League. Won't be his last. Uh, we get a power play for the Wild. That's killed off. The shots are three apiece at five and a half minutes. We get a power play for Anaheim. That's killed off. Uh, Carlson has a net drive. That's held. Wild draw a power play. Boldy has a one-timer. That's held. And then at 11.50, uh, with Gibson down and out, uh, Kaprizov makes some pay. Uh, he scores. It goes in off uh, Gustav Lindr Lind Lindstrom. Uh, Hartman and Boldy with the assist. That makes it 3 nothing for Minnesota. Easy for me to say. Uh, we then get a power play for Anaheim. That's killed off. So we're going to the third period. 
uh, with the score 3-0 Minnesota. Early press by the Ducks, but the Wild would draw a power play. They had some good chances, but that's killed off. In fact, the shots are 8-4 for the Wild at 5 minutes. Brodeen gets hurt. He's slow to exit, and he leaves. And it was an awkward hit along the boards. He twisted his leg. Uh, we'll see what the update says tomorrow, but it did not look great. And for Minnesota to make the playoffs, they really need Brodeen to be in the lineup and healthy. Boldy then fires one wide on a rush. We get a power play for the Wild, and uh, the feed died at that point. So that power play was killed off. The shots are 13-6 to for the Wild with seven minutes left at 13.03. Lucini scores from Beckman. Uh, the feed came back soon after that. Now, I had a laugh. I had a laugh because... This game was on my computer because, of course, Sportsnet Plus, I can't watch it on TV. And every time Yvonne left the room, Minnesota scored. And then when the feed died and Minnesota scored, I was like, well, of course, you're not allowed to see any of their goals. It's just, it's it's not meant to be. Uh, so the Wild press with five and a half minutes left. But since my wife was watching, they weren't allowed to score. So your final score is 4 nothing. The Tony the Tiger Magnet's there. Uh, 34, 27, and 8's the record for Minnesota. Uh, with the loss, the Ducks fall to 23, 43, and 3. And the Wild are within three points of a playoff spot right now, so don't count them out. Shots on net, 9-6 to six Minnesota in the first, 10-9 to nine Anaheim in the second, 14-11 Minnesota in the third. Final shots, 32-27 to 27 Minnesota. Power plays, 1-5 for five for Minnesota, 0-3 for, for Anaheim. The hits were 17-16 to 16 Anaheim. Gustafson saved 27 shots for the shutout. Uh, Gibson saved 28 out of 32, and I felt bad for Gibson late in this game because when I say wild press with five and a half minutes left, the Ducks just looked like they'd stop playing. Even Yvonne told me because they're they're not even really out there. It's just they've they've given up. And I said, well, they're down by four. They probably know what their record is, so just don't want to get hurt. All right, moving along. Uh, Chicago and L.A. So this one looked like it might end up being an upset, and then it wasn't. Uh, it's Morazic versus Talbot. Good early flow, no whistles. Uh, Jones has a shot that's kicked aside, and that was the only shot on net. Uh, five and a half minutes in, so Chicago was leading in shots at that point, but not by a lot. Uh, Kings weren't getting shots at the net. The shots are 3 nothing Hawks at nine and a half minutes. But at 12.03, Laferriere opens the scoring for L.A. from Lazat and Dubois. We then get a power play for Chicago, and six seconds later... Because of a delay of game, it becomes a 5-on-3. Uh, Foligno, 13 seconds into the 5-on-3, scores from Kershev and Jones at 14-27. But the Kings do kill off the 5-on-4 to keep it tied at 1. With 42.2 seconds left, the Hawks get a power play, so it's 1-1 one, one after 1. Second period, the Kings finish the kill. The Hawks press at 3 minutes. Uh, Kempe is denied from the slot. The Hawks press at 6.5 minutes. The shots are 6-5 to five LA, 7 minutes in. Uh, the Hawks press at eight minutes. I thought Chicago had a pretty good game in this, to be honest. But uh, a point shot goes in. It's Gavrikov from Kopitar and Kempe at 9.32. And then Kopitar scores from Kempe uh, at 11.52. Then Kopitar to Byfield. There's a near miss. That one's picked off. Uh, with 2.05 left, the Kings go back to the power play. And Kopitar scores again in the McFlurry minute. So I don't think I get a McFlurry, which what a, what a ripoff. Uh, that's at 1908 from Kempe and Fiala. I don't even know why I put McFlurry minute on. It's not like I get the McNuggets either. Why is it always Mick? McDonald seems to like to do the last minute thing. Anyways, it's 4-1 to one LA after two. Third period. Uh, Jones has a shot that's kicked aside. I would say, hey, go get your flurry tomorrow and then just send it to me, but it'd be gross. Uh, Megna has a chance that's caught and held. The Hawks press at two minutes. Kopitar's denied and close at 547. The Kings on a nice goal. It's a tic-tac-toe play. Dan O scores from Moore and Fiala. Uh, there's a power play then for Chicago. That's killed off. The Kings press with six and a half minutes left. But at 14-16, Korchinski with a shot that deflects in. Uh, Kershev and Bedard with the assist. So there you go. Bedard gets an assist tonight. Uh, but that's where the happiness ends if you're a Chicago fan because it's 17-10. Lewis scores from Dubois. So Dubois has got an assist streak going of three games. He's had four assists over that period of time. He's picking it up. Your final score is 6-2 for L.A. They go to 35-22-11 with the win. With the loss, Chicago 19-45-5. Shots on net, 6-5 L.A. in the first, 11-9 L.A. in the second, 10-7 Chicago in the third. Both teams had 24 shots. The power play, Chicago won for four. L.A. scored on the only one they had. Uh, hits 20-15 Chicago. Mrazek saves 18 out of 24. Talbot saved 22 out of 24. So... A uh, pretty solid all-around game for Chicago, d despite the score, I thought. I thought they had good stretches there. Next, uh, Buffalo and Vancouver, the Battle of the 1970 Expansion. So it's Levi versus DeSmith. It's also known as the, the, the Expansion of Misery. Neither of these teams have won anything in over 100 combined seasons. 
So early power play for Buffalo, that's killed off. Uh, and then the Canucks cleared after. The shots are 3-1 to one for the Sabres at 4 minutes. And at 4-11, uh, Garland puts one, he gets one that goes through Levi, kind of sort of, it's uh, next to the post and it goes in. Uh, Garland scores from Hughes and Pedersen and Buffalo didn't like how it was put into the net. And so they challenge it for goal interference. That fails. So the Canucks end up getting the power play out of that. Uh, that was killed off. <clears throat> Lafferty's then denied on a rush. We get a power play for Buffalo. That's killed off as well. Sabres press after it's done. The Canucks press with four and a half minutes left. Uh, then the Sabres get some pressure with two minutes left. With 7.8 seconds left, the Canucks get a power play. So they're up by one after the first period. And they're on the power play to start the second. Veronik has a one time with this block. The Sabres do finish the kill. Uh, shots are 3-1 to one for the Canucks at 5 minutes. The Canucks press. They're kept to the outside. Byram has a screenshot. That's held. Lindholm's denied. Levi holds. Elias Lindholm had a decent game tonight. Doesn't get on the score sheet, but I thought he had a hard game. Uh, Garland has a net feed that's picked off. There's a power play for Buffalo. That becomes 43 seconds of 4-on-4, four four, meaning it becomes a Canucks power play, and they score on it. It's Pedersen, top shelf from in close. Miller and Hughes with the assists at 13-45. Tonight's game may be a sign Pedersen's getting his offensive game back in gear. Uh, Canucks press for another, but the Sabres get some pressure with four and a half minutes left, and then Lafferty's denied on a turnover. So Sam Lafferty had chances tonight. It's 2-0 Vancouver after two. Third period, the Sabres draw a power play. That's killed off. The Sabres press after it's done. The Canucks then draw a power play. Miller has a shot that's held. That's killed off. We get two minutes of four on four, and the Sabres score during that four on four. It's Darlene on a net drive from Power and Tuck at 9.23. Suddenly it's 2-1. to one. Uh, Amon is denied as the Canucks get some pressure. The rebound's cleared. Goalie pull happens with two and a half minutes left. And at 18.09, Pedersen scores into the empty net from JT Miller. It looks like the Canucks are home and cleared. But at 19.37, Darlene puts that little bit of doubt in your mind. He scores from Tage Thompson to make it 3-2. to two, But with 4.8 seconds left, the Canucks get a power play. Teddy Bluger was trying to get an empty netter. They call a power play instead. Uh, if they'd awarded him a goal, I would have been okay with it because he needs a goal. But at any rate, Vancouver holds on. They win this one 3-2. to two. They go to 43-18-8 and eight with the win. Buffalo 33-32-5 and five with the loss. And again, Buffalo's chances of making the playoffs are really, really slim. And losses like this, just it's just it's not going to happen. Shots on that, 15-7 Vancouver in the first, 10-3 Vancouver in the second, 9-7 Vancouver in the third. They outshoot Buffalo 34-17. I thought Buffalo had a good third, though. Uh, hit power plays 0 for 4 for Buffalo, 1 for 5 for Vancouver. Hits 29 to 17 Vancouver. Levi saved 31 out of 33. DeSmith saved 15 out of 17. So the Canucks are surviving without Demko. Even though I, I had to do a double take, I was watching Sportsnet and they had their feed, and it said expected starter for the Canucks was Demko, and I was thinking, no, it's not. In fact, the expected starters, almost none of them were right. I thought, man, if anybody's watching this and doing the whole gambling thing. Oh, Demko, let's take... Don't No, no, don't, don't trust their feet at all, apparently. All right, next up, last game of the night, Tampa Bay and Vegas. Vegas almost did it again. They, all, they almost did it again, so we're going to go through this. Uh, Vasilevsky versus Hill, and at 1 minute and 13 seconds on what was their first shot, Vegas scores. Uh, it's Marcia So from Theodore and Eichel, and it was a quiet start. There was only one shot for each team through four minutes. Um, and then there's too many bolts on the ice, so Vegas gets a power play. That leads to a shorthanded goal for Tampa, though. Uh, Sorelli on a 2-0 break. Hagel with the assist at 7 minutes. It's tied at 1. And then, most importantly, Tampa Bay finishes the kill. Uh, at 10.37 then, uh, Duclair taps in a rebound. Kucherov with the assist. Suddenly Tampa Bay has a 2-1 lead. Uh, we get a power play for Tampa. Things get pushy on a hold by Aiden Hill. That power play is killed off. It's 2-1 Tampa Bay after one. Second period, early jump for Vegas. Duclair then has a rush chance. that saved. We get a power play for the Golden Knights. That's killed off. One shot. They didn't have any shots on their first one. Uh, shots are three to one for Vegas at five and a half minutes. We get a power play for Tampa. That's killed off. Uh, Vegas presses with five and a half minutes left. And on a two-on-one rush, Howden scores from Colasar at 16.52. Uh, Roaz then denied and close as Vegas is looking for the lead. So after two periods of play, it's 2-2. It's rare. The Tampa Bay is in a tie game after two periods, but we go to the third with it tied at that score. Uh, early jump for Vegas in the third. Vegas presses at three minutes. Hannafin hits a post that close to his first goal as a Vegas Golden Knight. We then get a power play for Tampa, and they score on it. It's Braden Point uh, from Kucherov and Stamkos at 4.52. Hagel then had a fast break that was defended without taking a penalty. And then at 8.15, Hutton ties the game again. He buries one from the slot. Kolasar with his second assist of the game on that one. 
Uh, Point then fires one wide on a rush, and at 12-14, uh, on a weird bounce off the boards, which I thought Hill should have played that puck. If Hill plays that puck, there's no goal there. Uh, Point goes five hole on one that bounces off the boards right to him. He buries it past Hill, who wasn't ready. Kucherov and Radish with the assists. Suddenly Tampa Bay has a 4-3 to three lead. Uh, Vegas gets a power play. That's killed off. There's a press by Vegas with two and a half minutes left. And they had opportunities. And I thought they're going to come back and score. They're going to win this one in overtime. They're going to pull it out in the end again, aren't they? Uh, goalie pull happens with a minute and a half left. With 116 left, Vegas calls a timeout. But uh, at 1851, Kucherov scores from Chernak and Stamkos. Vegas did try to challenge that goal. But the, the reviews were inconclusive. And so that means Tampa Bay power play, which means a 5-3 to three win for the Tampa Bay Lightning in Vegas. Uh, they've won, I think it's like four in a row in Las Vegas. Uh, they're 37, 25, and 6. No Vegas flu for these guys. Uh, Vegas 36, 25, and 7 with the loss. And they have to watch out because Minnesota's right behind them. St. Louis isn't that far behind. Vegas' hold on that second uh, wild card spot, a little tenuous. So the shots on net, 10 to 7 Tampa Bay in the first, 8 to 3 Vegas in the second, 12 to 8 Vegas in the third. Final shots, 27 to 21 for the Golden Knights. Power plays. Tampa Bay 1 for 4, Vegas 0 for 3. The hits 34 to 26 for Vegas. Vasilevsky saves 24 to 27. At the other end, Aiden Hill, 16 saves on 20 shots. His stats continue to be kind of middling and mediocre lately. I think I think Logan Thompson's going to get the net. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.